Welcome back to the WAC Podcast. Eric Danner, Jess Radford in Arlington, Texas, home of the World Series champion, Texas Rangers. Kendra Sheehan is in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Kendra had a chance to catch your call both times, a little bit Sunday on the uh, on the airplane, and then Wednesday, all of it, you and Ben Wilson. Fantastic job, by the way couple of uh, surprising games. Let's back it up, I guess, to Sunday and kind of go through the tournament, starting with the first matchup, UNLV, Utah Valley. UNLV's at home. Uh, they play Utah Valley, and that, that was maybe, well, I don't think the most exciting match of the tournament, but UNLV's kind of been the cardiac kid so far. Yeah, I mean, this is a story of a team that was picked second to last in the preseason coaches poll B.J. Craig in his second year with this program took over last year. The team had just one win on the season, no wins in conference play. They wanted to get to the tournament knowing that they were going to be that host team. And then they said, hey, if we're there, why not try and make a run for it? They go up early against Utah Valley. It was a really back and forth game that ended up, of course, going into overtime. And Nico Lopez, the senior, was really the story of that one. He had a hat trick. He scored that goal with just about a minute left in that second overtime period. It's the first hat trick ever in, in WAC men's soccer history. Pushes his team the tournament to the semifinals. History. What'd you say? Sorry. Tournament history. Tournament history. Yes. Sorry. Didn't mean to step on you. You're yeah, on no, it, and of I course, do this all it, the time. It, so, so sorry, it happened Kendra. in such. Go on with your story, please. Yeah. <laughs> it happened in such dramatic fashion, too. You know, it's it, the score was knotted up at two for quite some time. And Nico Lopez just gets a great ball in, is able to finish it off a header, just textbook soccer right there, rips his shirt off. Gets the yellow card for that celebration. Kind of got a restart because the rules have changed from last year to this year in terms of overtime. It used to be a golden goal. So that goal would have done it, would have ended the game. But in this new version, you have to play out that two 10-minute periods. And so there were really a minute left on the clock. Restart. and uh, But you can't blame the kid. I mean, what a what an awesome game that he had probably the game of his life he doubled the number of goals scored on the year in just one match and so really cool opportunity for the host team to be able to move on to that semifinal matchup then in that second matchup utah tech against san jose state you saw them in the regular season in st george then you get to see the rematch you get to call the rematch we know it was going to be a tough matchup as, as simon tobin's team usually kind of a tough gritty team utah tech kind of the same way and this one went Utah Tech's way. Yeah, in the regular season, these two teams met, and it was 3-0 San Jose State. But Coach Tobin would be the first one to tell you that the score flattered San Jose State. It didn't really look like that during the match. It was really a tight contest. Utah Tech actually outshot San Jose State, and they just came in with a lot of intensity. Utah Tech kept pressuring San Jose State. That back line for the Spartans is something that we had talked about all year. They had three guys that have been four-year starters, Thomas Beecham, the defensive player of the year. And so for this young Trailblazer team to be able to go get behind that back line and score a goal early and just hang on is a pretty incredible win for a team that was making their first appearance ever in the postseason tournament winning a game, and uh, that was a team that was picked dead last in the preseason coaches poll and got the three seed in this tournament. Waiting for Jess to ask a question. <laughs> and I'll just go ahead and continue to add that it was <laughs> it was Austin Wallace, the freshman, who was able to do it. And one of the interesting things about this Utah Tech <laughs> team is, you know, they come in the three seed, but all of the, all the players new to this conference tournament and head coach Johnny Broadhead had talked about, you know, at the half, they just wanted the match to be within reach. And so they go up one nil at the half. And so it was just kind of a story of a team that, you know, was just, why not us? We're playing for, we don't have anything to lose out here. We're trying to get as far as we can in the tournament and write some history for a program that just started soccer back in 2008. So fairly new transitioning from D2 to D1, still in that transition period. So they wouldn't be eligible to go to that postseason had they won out in the tournament and just gain some experience. Of course, coach Johnny Broadhead uh, played his collegiate soccer at CSU Pueblo in what conference? Oh my gosh, the RMAC? <laughs> <laughs> Ongoing uh, inside joke from uh, last week. Apparently, I say that quite a bit. Uh, we, we, we went on to the semifinals. Of course, Seattle U ranked number nine in the country, team on a roll. And we knew, I mean, 
we you saw this happen last year as you were at CBU, Kendra, where the home site, you know, maybe a team that's not picked to win, nothing to lose. And that's kind of what happened again on Wednesday night. Yeah, Seattle U comes in the clear favorite. When I spoke with all head coaches before the term even started, they felt like two through six were pretty even, but Seattle U had been that established front runner, hadn't lost a game in conference play, ranked number nine in the coaches poll most recently that just came out before this tournament had started. And so came in that clear favorite. But when you look at this tournament and how we're set up, that last regular season match ended on the 29th of October. And here we are playing in a little November. So there's a 10 day break between those matches. And that's something that coaches were kind of worried about. Hey, will we have that same rhythm? Will we not bring the same intensity that we need to? And the cool thing about this matchup is UNLV and, C or, and Seattle U played each other October 29th, that last game of the regular season. And in that matchup, it was 2-1 Seattle U, but UNLV had, was the one that struck first. They played with a lot of intensity. It really could have gone either way. And so in this semifinal match, UNLV jumps out to the early lead. Seattle U equalizes it about four minutes later, and then we're knotted up. This game also goes into overtime. So those Rebels playing numerous minutes over the course of these last four days and this one ended in crazy fashion. It ended up with a, a handball in the box with one second remaining in that second overtime period. UNLV, Gabe Sanchez, the senior, gets to take the PK, puts it in the back of the net, and the home team is moving on to the championship. Just a really neat storyline. Question for you on that, and I, forgive me my ignorance on this. Could they have uh, substituted somebody else to shoot the PK? Obviously, Gabe made it. But in that situation, is that uh, somewhere, something where you, you might put a Nico Lopez in? Yeah, we were actually wondering if Nico Lopez would take the uh, the PK. And so now you're calling me out because I'm actually not sure. Um, I knew it had to be somebody who was on the pitch. Um, but I, I don't know if he could have done Nico Lopez in that situation. But yeah, uh, so that's, I mean, shout out to uh, to Coach Craig. I mean, that's that's uh, that was the right call. And, and yeah, it was. It was amazing because what, two seconds left, one second left? One second was left and they had to go back. They obviously it goes under official review. Anytime there's a penalty kick awarded on the field, they go back and they were looking at it, it was a clear handball. He reached his arm out. Just really unfortunate because you know UNLV had been continuing to pressure and Charlie Lanfear, the goalkeeper, just boots it out of bounds, which allows UNLV to get one more attack going in the final 15 seconds and just for it to end in the way that it did. It was just kind of was there one second left? Did the time expire? And, and when they finally went back to the official review, they saw that there was just under one second remaining. So they had to take that PK and, you know, UNLV then going on to, to the championship matchup. And uh, just a point of clarification as well. I, I was advised of this uh, actually today that they no longer use our broadcast feed for that uh, official review. They have their own cameras set up that, that actually determine that. Yes. Yeah. They have some cameras set up and uh, a great, they had the great camera angle and were able to see the penalty, see the handball. And then it was just a matter of timing after that. So then you know? uh, what time it was, it was pretty late here on the central time zone <laughs> by the time that the second match got started, uh, which was Utah tech against California Baptist uh, Utah tech. And we had to have a scenario in place as well, because Utah tech not eligible for the NCAA tournament. So if they were to win the WAC tournament, who was going to be the team that would claim the AQ? And I believe that was Seattle U being the regular season champion. So with Seattle U losing, um, that opens up a spot because we think, knock on wood, they're in the tournament. They're the ninth ranked team in the country. RPI, I think top 20. Um, they should be in even with the loss. Uh, so that opens up the door for someone else to get in. Um, so we have CBU taking on Utah Tech. Uh, the scoring was fast and furious and then nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. California Baptist jumped out to an early 2-0 lead within the first 26 minutes of match play. And they looked really good in that 30 minutes. They were pressuring the ball. They were able to move it behind the Trailblazers defense pretty easily. Louis, Louis Mueller, who leads the team in goals, had a nice 
one touch to the back of the net. Couldn't have written it any better if you were head coach Co. Michelson. And then they really just took their foot off the gas and it was all trailblazers. That second half, the trailblazers outshot the Lancers. Uh, it was six, nothing early on in that first or in that first 10 minutes of play of that second half and credit to Utah tech. They, they just couldn't find the back of the net. I mean, they created chances. There were some that if you're the players, you'd look back, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda, you know, just some sloppy first touches, but they were getting behind that strong veteran presence, veteran defensive line for California Baptist uh, just didn't end up falling their way. And the cool thing is that, you know, Co Michelson was a big advocate for those transitioning schools to play in the postseason tournament. It never, fell that way California Baptist was never able to compete but he was so excited when Johnny Broadhead's program was able to do so and so he's been one of his main cheerleaders for this program um but they played their hearts out and that's a young team that looks to do some damage in the future so California Baptist back in the finals second year in a row Nolan Premack back in the net and, and a lot of players who were on that team last year that went to the NCAA's playing in that and then they get to play UNLV a hot team you know a team with nothing to lose number four seed in front of their home fans that's going to be Saturday at uh, 1 p.m pacific time almost like deja vu it is last year (laughs) but it's on the flip side for you who who did they play in the final last year San Jose State boom and that game went to CBU last year home what was their number five they were the five seed yeah and they won on their home field right UNLV. Yeah, and what was interesting is at the end of last season, California Baptist had a chance to be that two seed and earn the bye, and they lost a couple of matches down that final stretch that dropped them to the five seed, forcing them to have to play those three matches in five days. This year, they're able to close out during the final stretch, get that number two seed, and Co. Michelson was also worried, hey, that 10-day gap, they did the inter-squad scrimmage on Saturday to make sure guys kept their conditioning up and keep that rhythm, and it paid off, and I'm looking forward to seeing this matchup UNLV you know two overtime games uh they get that extra day of rest which I think will help with the legs kind of slowing down after playing so many minutes and then California Baptist the team that has been been in this situation before knows what it takes to win they have a a veteran keeper Nolan Premack can't say enough good things about what he's done for the program and should be a really exciting close matchup I'm I'm anticipating so extra day of rest for you as well (laughs) Is it though? <laughs> in Vegas, extra day in Vegas. Now you, you, now you were fighting off uh, a bug of, of some sort. Now you, you sound sound good, sound great. Last night, feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling feeling good. <laughs> you and, look good. And now you're oh, off thanks. to shoot the first episode of Road to Wag Vegas. That's right. I mean, can you believe it? We're talking about soccer, but it's hoop season. We actually got a chance to go to the Hall of Fame series that's here in Vegas. And so we got a chance to see the LSU women take on Colorado, the defending national champions get upset. taken down by about 14 points, a little bit of an upset there. And then uh, USC taking on Kansas State, LeBron James' son on uh, oh. the Trojan squad. Of course, he's still not medically cleared to play. However, they had mentioned that should everything go well in the next month, he should be back uh, training and with the team soon. Oh. I, I saw Shaq was was in the house. Was he DJing? I was. I thought about, hey, can I go down there and tap him? You want to DJ the WAC tournament? But uh, <laughs> I think he does the Big Twelves, so he might be booked during that time. Is but- he really? Yeah. He's doing the Big 12? They already announced What does he it. charge? Three mil. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Maybe we can get Will Farrell. Did you see that he was DJing his son's like frat party? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe we can get Will Farrell. <laughs> I mean, here, we're Farrell. trying to go I here. We got to we gotta bring in the right DJs to do so. I think that would be funny. <laughs> A lot of pressure. Maybe we should put that on the whiteboard and- the conference room. hashtag big time DJ. Yeah, yeah. Russell's here. See what he thinks. Yeah, we got to ask RJW. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, Kendra, uh, you got anything else for us? I mean, you're, you're you're always just full of knowledge there. Um, no, but we, you know, shout out to our uh soccer coordinator for giving us some tickets to the sphere so we're going to get a chance to go in what? there they're showcasing uh 
video, I guess, of the earth. And so that's what they're doing for the next month. There's no concerts in there. So we're going to check it out. $2.9 billion project that opened early July here in Vegas. So it's relatively new. There's also the F1 race that's happening a uh, week from Saturday, I believe it is. So it's going right through the strip. So they have the race track kind of set up and they're building stands. It makes traffic an absolute nightmare here, but there's a lot of exciting things going on here in Vegas. So, so, so the shout out goes to Paul Scott. Yes. AKA the Fedora. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. a knowledgeable man right there. Well, you know, he lives near Orem. So we, we might see him again next week, I'm guessing. We saw him at CBU. You know where he started as an officials coordinator? Uh, it, what, for the national teams? No, no. What conference? Oh, oh my gosh. Here we go. RMAC. Oh, that's the right. RMAC. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you know this, Jess, but Danner used to work for the RMAC and actually at one point. <laughs> for 100 years. Was the commissioner. I was the commissioner. <laughs> You have an interim commissioner, right? The interim. Don't just say commissioner, so. interim. Hey, hey, when that was happening, the, the commissioner, interim, it's all the same. And he only had Buck three other co workers. <laughs> At that time, I only had one. He was actually the only one working, so they had to make him the commissioner. <laughs> I mean, that is true. <laughs> but man, did he crush that we, job. We, expanded, we got two new schools, we expanded scholarships in football. You did all that. Dan that was on you. That's right. Six months. Oh my God, the dead man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we got volleyball coming up. We talked about it in the previous segment. You're going to be on the sideline for that. And we're already prepping for uh, volleyball next week. Oh man, I mean, my brain is just exploding. There's so much going on. We got a chance to talk with California Baptist, UTRGV. We got some more coaches calls set up in the pipeline very excited to switch over i did play-by-play -play analysts and now i'm going to the sidelines so i mean my goodness let's go the versatile the swiss army knife of broadcasters kendra so, good. so and then you're going for a whack road trip as well that's right got a few uh few sites that i'm gonna try and check out you know i always like to showcase what's going around what's going on around our institutions park city is about 40 minutes from orem where i could potentially do a bobsled so look out for that i hope no. i don't injure well, myself we talked about this with uh, clint berge at uvu yesterday they have a bobsled they do the skeleton which yeah you know, have you ever seen the skeleton? No, girl, but don't get out so of that So the bobsled, position. at least you got like that that thing in front of you, and I guess somebody else drives it. But the skeleton, you're just laying on your back, right? Just My face. I have absolutely you. no idea. I'm going to have to do some significant research before that this scary. <laughs> but, Life's uh, for the also, living, some, Jess. <laughs> some of you uh, track athletes have gone on to be Olympic bobsledders and skeletoners. Skeletoners. Yeah. That's so, actually crazy. So it'll be fun. And then you get to fly Provo. That's right. Provo Regional Airport, a proud sponsor of the Western Athletic Conference. Can't wait to uh, check out that airport. Give you guys, you know, the details on what it looks like. Pick a video. A oh, you know it. Kendrick. Follow our WAC Instagram. You'll see yeah. everything. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, we'll keep up the tremendous work there, Kendra. We will see you next week in Utah. All righty, thanks, guys. All right, that's this week's edition of the WAC Podcast. We'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.